So when it comes to DDL, so I have already created a database with the name, uh, I think a bootcamp demo. Yeah. So this is the database which we have created yesterday. And now we are talking about DDL. Typically, I follow the official manuals to understand the syntax and semantics of, uh, of any technology and learn and explore further. So you can Google for the official documentation by saying Hive manual. And you can get here. In this, DDL means data definition language, which is nothing but creating tables, dropping tables, truncating tables, altering tables and adding column street, etc. So here we'll start with Hive manual. Under data definition statements, you can see DDL statements. If you click on it, it will take you to a separate page which is related to Hive. And if you zoom in and if you scroll down, there's a big square box here which, which gives the syntax. Go to any database technology and check the syntax of their SQL or DDL or DML. It will look like this. It will exactly look like this. So all the words such as create, table, so all those which are not in square brackets, they are mandatory. So if you want to create table, you need to have create table and then rest of the stuff. In this case, to create the table, you have to at least have create table and table name. You can see here. And if you observe, this create table are in caps and then db name and table name are in small letters. So all those which are in caps are keywords. Okay, keywords means database or underlying technology will interpret those things in a certain way. Okay, and they are language specific or technology specific. Every programming language, every scripting language, every database technology will have at least some of the keywords, if not many. Okay, typically database technologies will have keywords like create, table, alter, a comment, partition by, cluster by. All these are common across all the database technologies, not just a high article. Then all those and also you can see some differences here if you see temporary is in square brackets and this is not which means these are optional but when it comes to columns okay so this is the specification for columns they are saying columns should be defined as column name data type etc and if you look at that section it is in circular brackets in square brackets it is again in circular brackets which means we need to at least have one of them okay so at least we need to have one column name along with the data type and along with column, comment is optional. If you want to give comment for each column, you can give. The, uh, typically, the column names have certain restrictions. You cannot have as longer column names. You cannot have column names beginning with numbers. Uh, you, you might not have any special characters in them. That makes the column names cryptic because you cannot have spaces. If you don't have spaces, if you have a complex name, uh, means with multiple words, it, it sounds cryptic. To address that, most of the database technologies support comments and you can optionally give comment for each column. So the circular bracket in this square, bra in this square bracket means there should be at least one of them. Again, within that, you can see comments are optional. And also, if you want, you can have constraint specification. You can define the constraints. And then you can have a optional comment at table level. So the ones which are in circular bracket in the square bracket, the upper one, the comment is for each column. So once you define all the columns, then you, if you want, you can define comment at the table level to tell what is the table for. Then we will talk about partition by, cluster by, skewed by, etc. at a later point in time. Then there is an optional, very important class called row format, which we'll be seeing very soon. And uh, why we need to understand that, I will explain uh, that. And typically these are used for text files only. Okay, because text files, will have records with a particular delimiter for field and for row or for uh, each line. There, there won't be any metadata within the file uh, in, except for column names in some cases. As text data will not have metadata for each record, we have to tell how the records are formatted in our data. Okay, that's why this row format is important. But when you actually insert into Oracle tables or when you create Oracle tables, you don't specify row format. I will explain that reason in a moment. And then we, uh, optionally we can specify the location. We'll get back to that 
at a later point in time. Now to define the columns, if you look at the syntax, it takes column names and data type. Each column name need to have a data type. Both are mandatory. If you look at this, this data type uh, column name is what you, you give. But when it comes to data type, typically in some cases like Oracle and all, those data types and all will be specified with some special character before. But here in Hive documentation, they don't do not. Which means that there is some some material related to that at the latter point in time. But in this case, they do not highlight like that. But in some cases, like uh, or in some database technologies, when they document, if there is an additional material for one of those keywords, which is part of that main create table syntax, they will represent in a different way. And then uh, they also might give you URLs for that. If you click on that, it will take you to appropriate section. Okay, in this case, data type is one such type where you need to understand more information. And others are this row format. Even row format, you need to go elsewhere and you have to understand what is row format. But in this case, I have very limited uh, syntax and hence you have everything in this square box itself so if you want to know more about data types you, you have to come here if you want to know more about row format you have to come here now when it comes to data type yeah if you see again there are primitive types array type map type structure type union type these are the complex types so you have primitive type and complex types uh, primitive types are these things tiny int small int int big int boolean float double all numeric types, boolean and uh, alphanumeric, char, var, char, date, timestamp, all these are considered as primitive types. And then you have complex types also. Array type syntax is like this, map type syntax is like this, structure type syntax is like this. So when you define the columns, you can define complex types also. What are these complex types? We'll talk at a later point in time. And then uh, when it comes to row format, you have to tell how the rows are formatted if, the, if we are talking about text files. Otherwise, we don't need to. Even in text files, it assumes certain defaults, and we need to understand that also. I will cover those. Now comes file format. By default, text file is the file format used, but Hive also supports other file formats, such as sequence file, RC file, ORC, Parquet, Avro, etc. Then comes constraint specification. You can define primary key, foreign key, etc. But these are not enforced. Okay, they are only for informational purpose. They will not be enforced. But in Oracle and all, they will be enforced.